6.30, we'll call this meeting to order. Dan, could you get a roll call vote, please? Or yeah, roll call, please? Yep, Councilmember uh, Monson. Here. Councilmember Bystrom. Present. Uh, Councilmember Husnick. Here. And Mayor Bain. Here. I'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I will entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose, abstain, motion carries. Just a quick note of our process tonight. Tonight we have a special meeting for the purpose of um, appointing a candidate for our open council seat. Um, the process that we will follow tonight is the process that council previously approved at their meeting. Um, in front of council and on the agenda is a list of candidates, all of those that who applied by the deadline application, which was end of business Friday, February 1st. Um, those candidates have been listed in random order. There was a random drawing to determine interview process. All candidates will be interviewed. Um, there is a set list of interview questions we will go through and then council is able to ask any additional questions as they would like. Um, Administrator Casey will be um, conducting the interviews. Council will chime in after each candidate if there is any additional questions. Um, after all of the candidates have been interviewed, we will then go into a five minute recess and then we will open up the deliberation phase with a motion um, and a second um, to consider a candidate and then we'll, be, we'll begin the um, discussion and the voting phases from there. Um, if there is a candidate chosen tonight, if they wish, we are prepared to administer an oath of office so that it is official as of this evening. <coughs> Otherwise, we will do that at our next um, scheduled city council meeting. Council, any questions as we begin the process tonight? Okay, with that, we will start with our first candidate who is Mr. Paul Gerard. Good evening, I'm Paul Gerard, currently serving on the Planning Commission. Prior to that, I was on the Park Board. I'm a 28 year veteran at the City of Forest Lake. Mr. Gerard, Mr. Gerard, please introduce yourself, as you have already. Tell us why, what the primary reason is that you are interested in serving on the Forest Lake City Council. I want to see the city to continue to move forward. Forest Lake is a very nice community, but I think it could even be a better place to live, go to school, and to work. I want to continue to focus on a variety of residential housing, business growth opportunities, and amenities, so Forest Lake is a destination to live and to come to. What do you believe is the top issue in 2019 that faces the city of Forest Lake? I gotta be honest, I could not narrow it down to one. So I think there's many things that need to be addressed, but of primary importance is we need to keep our residents informed. We need to heal from some of the divisiveness and distractions over the last few years. We need to have the comprehensive plan accepted. It's key to set the critical path moving forward for growth. We need more business growth. We have some great businesses in town. However, we need more business that employ higher wage earners. And lastly, we need to keep taxes reasonable by providing great services. Describe your vision for the city of Forest Lake. It would be a very vibrant community, a variety of housing options, an above average school district, because people like to move to desirable school districts. We would have more businesses with higher wage opportunities. And lastly, stuff to do. We have Lakeside Park, we have Arts in the Park, the Polar Plunge, the Fourth of July. We need to get people involved in the community and they will help it grow and be a better place. The city doesn't do it, but we at times will need to be the catalyst to make it happen. Uh, 
Uh, do you have any questions for the council at this time? I do not. Council members, do you have follow-up? Any follow-up questions for Mr. Gerard? Mr. Gerard, you um, cited community involvement as kind of a, a key um, accomplishment, you know, that you want to make. You want to see the community much more involved in some of the decision making. Can you give me a couple of specific examples how you might make that happen? I, I, I think some more of the just casual encounters, whether it would be at meetings in town with the businesses, out in the community, like at Arts in the Park, so you can meet and talk to people. Just encounters that you can get some feedback from what I would call not the normal people who are gonna call you and likely complain, I would think primarily, but occasionally they probably tell you something nice. Um, but just more informal ways of getting information from people. Um, you know, some cities, they have coffee with the people and they, and they do some of these other things that Hopefully there can be some more random interaction for knowing what people want to do, what they want to see in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, one question, if I may. Your application indicates that you have, um, in the past, in your professional position, um, managed staff and budgets. I'm not sure I know what that professional capacity is. What, give me a little more detail on your, your day job, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> as, and specifically as it relates to those two things. Um, currently, I oversee um, a machine shop with about 20 staff and a facility, about a 200,000 square, 200, square foot facility down in the city of Shoreview. Perfect. And you said about 20 staff? Yes. Great. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Gerard? Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank being you. first. <laughs> It was not my chosen number, but. Yeah. <laughs> and next up we have Mr. Tim Miller. Good evening. Mr. Miller, would you introduce yourself and tell us the primary reason why you're interested in serving on the Forest Lake City Council? Absolutely, uh, and as you said, my name is Tim Miller, I've been, uh, a member of this community for almost three years now. Um, I'm a member of the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission. Um, one of my primary reasons for getting involved there and then in turn running for city council this past year uh, was kind of twofold. When I made the move to come to Forest Lake, I wanted to get involved in the community and help, you know, to make a difference and, and really to help set an example uh, to my kids. Yeah, you know, and to others, that community involvement is important. Um, furthermore, I've seen the divisiveness in, in some of the issues um, and seen what can happen when, you know, there's, there's the difference of opinions and, and some of those are legacy opinions. And I kind of represent, in my opinion, the, the what we want to attract for new members of the community, uh, being uh, new to the community myself, or relatively new, that I should say, and I don't come with those preconceived notions. Um, I'm just looking to, to help forward the community. What do you believe is the top issue in 2019 that faces the city of Forest Lake? For me, the main issue and the top issue is always back to the core services. I think helping the um, city staff and administration, uh, facilitating them to achieve uh, great service, uh, do the things that they've been hired to do and know how to do, not uh, kind of red tape any of that, and then piggyback that in with uh, uh, gaining feedback from the community. I think the best ideas come from both uh, the folks working day to day in the, in the city and those that live here. Describe your vision for this Forest Lake. You know, I really don't come with a grand vision. Um, I moved here because I see in a place that um, 
seemed like a great community, had a lot of activities, um, you know, a lot of great things to do. So I guess if I was to look at a grand vision, um, you know, I'd want a, a city where, where a family and, and folks can come <coughs> to not only begin a family, but to, you know, retire here as well. Um, a community that doesn't have to be a, a one that just w uh, comes here to live and works in other places. So I think uh, ec economic development would be a um, important piece of that. If we can create more jobs and, and more well-paying jobs uh, um, in the community to keep people here and not have to you know, spend their days on the road, that would be great. Do you have any questions for the City Council? I do not. City Council, follow-up questions. Any questions for Mr. Miller? I have, um, so I do have a question. You mentioned um, in, your, um, in your introduction kind of a goal of um, reducing divisiveness within the community. Can you give us an example of in your, either your personal life, professional life of kind of conflict and how you have managed through that and how you might apply that to um, city council in a, a position? Sure. sure. Um, recently we've had some, some discussion in, in work. I, I'm a construction project manager. Um, and I'm in, heavily involved in several of the committees that we have there uh, in re regards to uh, this one in particular is reviews and how to perform reviews, um, which is always divisive. And uh, you know we, we have a, a field team and a, and a management team structure. And inevitably, when the management team is reviewing the field team they, and it's negative, there's you know pushback. So in, in looking at that and how we can prevent that from happening, uh, there was some suggestion, but we don't share the review with them. Well, that's not, the, to me, the right way. We need to be transparent. And I think um, allowing them for some feedback and then for some feedback within that review in this particular instance um, to help answer those questions, uh, really it came down to transparency and letting all the stakeholders have a say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, uh, you made a statement, Mr. Miller, about um, the importance of core services and cutting, I guess, kind of cutting red tape for staff. Can you give me an example of what you see as red tape? Well, for staff you know, I'll, I'll look back to um, one thing that uh, I, th I believe. Uh, um, Administrator Casey had brought up in a recent uh, council meeting um, in regards to the finance director position. Um, items like that where they have, uh, the city staff has uh, some good ideas that we might want to take a look at, uh, looking at do they make sense versus, you know, having an outside, in this particular instance, an outside entity t uh, doing those services for us. I think uh, there's a lot of good points made there that, uh, having something in house uh, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Ms. Kaylin Bauer. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah. Welcome. Uh, Ms. Bauer, could you introduce yourself and tell us the primary reason why you were interested in serving on the S City of Forest Lake City Council? Yes, my name is Kaylin Bauer. I'm interested in serving on Forest Lake City Council because since moving here in 2015, I have followed the issues of the city and been inspired how everyone comes together. I believe I could add value to the council by bringing my own skills of negotiation along with building relationships based on respect and empathy. I have daughters who are and will be in the Forest Lake School District. The community they are raised in is very important to me. What is the top issue, what do you see as the top issue in 2019 for the city of Forest Lake? It's very important to me for Forest Lake to be a place that people want to raise kids. 
and the schools are very important along with public spaces. I feel Forest Lake is becoming a location where many people want to live. To keep our property values up, and to we have to continue to invest in our schools and our community. The downtown area has many buildings with their doors shut. Positive growth is needed without taking advantage of the taxpayers. I also feel technology is very important. Everyone should have access to high-speed internet. Internet should be as important as electricity. Your vision for the city of Forest Lake, please. My vision of Forest Lake is it will continue to be a great place to raise a family, that everyone will have access to high-speed internet. I feel the city is amazing at coming together. A strong community builds strong kids. Everyone should be able to trust the city government will work to everyone's best interest. Do you have questions for the city council? I have a couple questions. What would you say would be the most rewarding part of being on city council? I would say <laughs> it's getting to meet all the people in Forest Lake yeah. and kind of expanding your, um, you know, your thoughts and views. Perfect. And then uh, is there anything about city council that you didn't anticipate? It's, I, it's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah, the, the yeah. time commitment would be the big thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. You have to understand that. The crunch to yep. research and make decisions mm -hmm. and gather enough information and balancing that with community input yeah. is all, it's a time commitment. Yeah. yeah, very intriguing. And we all knew that, but right. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, there's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lots of reading. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would say the best thing for me about being a council member is seeing the difference you can make right in your own community. Yeah. You know, when you're involved at a state level or a federal level, level in policy decisions, you don't necessarily see that come to fruition in a, in a real way, you know, yeah. right in your own neighborhood. So I think that's the best part for me. Thank you. And also working in a small group. There's not hundreds of us. There's five decision makers mm -hmm. with a, you know, staff and boards and commissions. But you are, um, as part of this council, 20% of the budget decision and 20% of every other decision. And that's um, an ability to have a great impact. So Thank rewarding. You. Thanks. Anything else? No. Questions? No more for me. Does the board, uh, council have questions for the candidate? You had in your um, resume or background, um, you reference, um, let me, I'm sorry, hold on just a second. Okay. I had, in your professional life, you talk about um, sales and marketing and um, reconciling different opinions and kind of bringing together, uh, you, you kind of infer bringing together the deal. Can you just give me a little bit more perspective of your roles and maybe some of your success in, um, su success in, that, well, in that type of a role? Currently, I'm doing collect I'm a bonds agent also, so I'm doing collections for the bonds agents a lot. So when I'm having to do that, I'm having to call people that you know are usually down on their luck and build a rapport with them in order to get them to make a financial decision to make it so they're not buried even deeper in debt. So I'm having to go out and build the personal relationship, get to know them, and then get them to trust me enough to know that I'm not gonna like try to take all their money and be honest. That's helpful, thank you. Yeah. Other questions for Ms. Bauer? Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next we have Ms. Connie Grabovi. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us the primary reason you are interested in serving on the Forest Lake City Council. Hello, good evening. My name is Connie Grabovi, and I know most of you, good to see you. I'm here tonight standing before you not only interested as Connie Grabovi, but also representing the people that I was fortunate enough to have support me during the past election. And so 
earning their trust and respect was one of the most rewarding things that occurred along with meeting the people during that last election. So I continue to be motivated to serve my community and that is one of the reasons that I'm standing also before you tonight. I have a passion for service and in my professional life as a, I am a, currently a public health nurse, a registered nurse, and I work with members of the community to ensure that they are engaged with their health care. In the past, I've served in the military. I have served our community as a 911 dispatcher. I've also served as an EMT, and that continues to be a thread. And something that I continue to be passionate about is that service piece. And I think as a city council member, you definitely are in that position of serving your community and being a professional advocate for the citizens of our community. And so that is why I continue to be highly invested in wanting to be involved in our community. What do you believe is the top issue in, the, in 2019 facing the city of Forest Lake? I think we have a lot of priorities and in my mind in speaking with many of the residents throughout the last few months is one of the things that I continue to hear as a theme and that I obviously feel is important as a taxpayer is fiscal responsibility and accountability for how we spend money at the local level. I think also I heard a lot of people and agree with it uh, espouse the idea of promoting our city to make it very attractive to not only businesses but also developers. And in, in turn, we need to ensure that we have processes in place at the city that make it a user-friendly engagement with a developer or with someone seeking a permit. And so I think that continues to be a priority is to make sure that we are clearly laying those things out for the people that are coming to us to want to do things in our community. Huge priority for me, not only as a mom, as a wife, as a, a member of our community is to ensure that our community is safe and secure so that we can enjoy all the things that everyone likes to do in our community, walk, uh, use the trails, use the lake, whatever it might be that we want to do when we're out and about. And part of that is ensuring that we have strong support for our public safety. That includes the fire department, the police department, and also our EMS and county partners. So I think continuing to promote and support that in our community is a priority, as well as bolstering our city and local ordinances to ensure that we are not setting ourselves up to be taken advantage of by predatory businesses or business practices. So I think that is a priority as well. Also infrastructure, which are roads, pipes, water, those types of things, so I don't mean to go on and on. But um, again, the appearance of our downtown area, that seems to be a number one theme for many people. I live downtown in, the, in one of the condos downtown. And it is not fun to be presented with some of the images that we are presented with on a daily basis downtown. So I believe that is a priority as well. <coughs> Please describe your vision for the city of Forest Lake. So I think my priority list sort of would lead you into understanding what my vision is for Forest Lake. But I think at the core of who we are at Forest Lake is we want to respect each other. We want to know that the people that are working in our city government, including employees and those that are serving our community as elected officials, are engaged in a civil, respectful dialogue with each other and that we have a good working relationship and we are able to talk to each other, citizen to elected official, citizen to the people that work for the city. And I also think it's imperative that our city employees feel supported and that they're engaged in the pro excited to come to work and that they're proud of the city that they serve as well. Do you have any questions for the city council? I do not. City council, do you have any questions for the candidate? I have a question. Um, you list a, a long list of top issues and a, a, a great list of top issues. Where would you start? Like what would be your number one we want to, you want to move the needle on, you to pick one. So I think number one would be process. 
is ensuring that we have efficient processes in place so that we can decrease frustration from community members and those that want to engage in business with the city of Forest Lake. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions of Ms. Grabovi? I have one. Um, you mentioned the importance of fiscal responsibility, but then also talked about um, safety and security and improvements in downtown. So it, you know, there's some balance there. Um, how do you find that balance in making those investments in the community, but being fiscally responsible simultaneously? And that is a very good question, Kathy. So as someone who is a nurse and is not involved in business on a regular basis, um, I would say the things that I've learned seeing other cities be successful is we need to market ourselves. We need to get people excited about investing in us as a city. And so I would choose to seek an approach to create a competitive process that we have people that actually want to come to our city and we're not offering them too much of a carrot to continue to do business or want to do business or start business or build in our city. That, that we're creating that, we're a magnet for those people. And so I would look into ways to see how we can get them to want to invest in us versus us having to invest in them. Thank you. Other questions from Ms. Grabovi? Thank you. Thank you. A quick note of clarification. I am famous for skipping the agenda. And just a quick note, um, we, I did not intentionally skip um, Mr. Dennis Batty. He is not able to be here tonight. Um, he has submitted his application, um, and he is still a candidate up for consideration, um, but is not here for the interview. So just wanted to make that point of clarification. Um, next up, we have Mr. Jeff Klein. Hello? <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Please introduce, <clears throat> please introduce yourself and tell us the primary reason you are interested in serving on the City of Forest Lake City Council. Okay, well, hi. Um, I am Jeff Klein, and I think it would be an honor to be selected to fill the remainder of Mayor Bain's term. And I'm just extreme, extremely excited for Forest Lake to realize some of the endless potential that we all have known for years the city has and it always feels like we're on the cusp of doing it and for one reason or another it doesn't always happen but I think this time is for real I mean the most recent election it was an overwhelming I wanna call it a cry from the voters that it's time to move forward but I know that's why you were all elected overwhelmingly so and beyond that I mean I think I'm pretty well versed in the issues I mean you've seen me come up here and a lot of times I ramble but I I think um, I would compliment the four of you as I do have a similar viewpoint, I think, to all four of you. I just probably have a different perspective on how to get there, but at the end of the day, I think we're all pulling for the same thing. So it would, again, it would just be an honor to you know, have the chance to do that. What is the top issue uh, that faces the city in 2019? Well, if you like a philosophical issue, I think it's simply restoring or building our reputation or identity and not necessarily to us, but those who live outside the city limits. I think we in town or in the city here have realized we've kind of turned a corner, but to those outside our borders, they may think we're still, you know, representative of what we've kind of witnessed in these chambers the last, two if not four years, and as well as possibly for city staff because um, you know I'd hate to think they would worry that we're one election away from going back to things that weren't always so positive for their working environment. And I'm hope, hopeful that city staff is more confident and comfortable now and they recognize that they're supported by the people in the city via U4 up there on the council. Um, as well as hopefully a fifth member who would feel the same way and would support city staff. Um, the concrete issue at the moment, and there's usually always something, I guess, it's no doubt from what I have here just talking to people in town, is the Hool property. Um, and I believe I can help navigate this issue since this particular area is kind of in my professional wheelhouse. It's sort of what I do. So, um, you know, 
First, with that issue, we have to be open and clear about what it may or may not entail. You know, I hear a lot of convention center, convention center from people, but it's not really a traditional convention center. In reality, it's a conference center, and if you really want to cut to the chase, it's a hotel with a restaurant on top with a room in it that essentially you could put 65 six-foot rounds of 10 in there. Like, the equivalent would be the offensive zone of a hockey hockey rink, basically blue line to goal line. That It's really just a space. So, um, yeah, so that's my analogy. Um, the council kind of has to decide how much city investment is made with that. I mean, we all know convention centers typically or conference centers can drive business to the hotel, but it really doesn't work in reverse. So depending on what part of this deal we're talking about, if the city has to pay for a large portion of one aspect that's really just driving revenue to another one, we need to be cognizant of that. Or simply just make that decision of what the city wants and talk it through. But what we don't want to do is, you know, tell people that there's these grandiose projections or whatever. Just, you know, if honestly you all up there decide this is a project that works, just explain that and the costs associated with it. And down the road, you know, hopefully that would come to fruition. And if you were against it, then you would just explain that as well. So I think that's my answer to that because I started rambling again. <laughs> Please describe your vision for Forest Lake. Well, my vision is to kind of take a methodical approach forward, not slow, but more of a steady progress. It, I know that's a governing style, but um, visions need to actually be acted upon to be accomplished. So I guess my vision is just to have a functioning local government that accomplish what needs to be done without all the drama of the past necessarily to get there. The easy way out is always just to say no. And I kind of think we should try to find ways to say yes to things, not rubber stamp foolishness or anything, but not always take the easy way out and vote no. Um, I'd like to work towards something realizing that every decision we make today affects tomorrow good or bad and you know at the end of the day I'd like to pre preserve things when we can but also improve things when we know we should thank you do you have any questions for the City Council do you guys find it difficult to avoid a quorum just in your daily lives like a quorum of the council Not, not to my notion. Okay. I think we are a council that will be involved, and I think avoiding a quorum or perceptions of quorum will be important as we all move forward and as we are out and about and at events. And um, you will see every notice continue to be noticed as a, um, a quorum of council may be present um, for meetings because we tend to be, a, I think, a group that shows up. Um, but I think we all... It's a professional responsibility to manage that and to manage both actual facts as well as perception of facts, and that means we're coordinating on who's where, when, and um, in what capacity. So. Okay, thank you. Any other answers to that? Well said. Any additional questions? Questions of Mr. Klein. I have a question. Um, you mentioned um, in respect to economic development, um, your your day job, and um, I was wondering if you could just expand on your professional expertise, and not as it relates particularly to the project that is on the, the agenda for um, the next couple of months, but in broader economic development and how s some of the skills you have might um, kind of complement council in making some of those economic development decisions. Okay. Um I don't know if it's economic development per se, but professionally I manage um, convention centers, stadiums, arenas, and those things. So a lot of things like in my job, I'm always like, currently I'm at US Bank Stadium. Um, I'm assistant director of the US Bank Stadium where the Vikings play. And you know, normally people are thinking about, oh, Final Four is coming up, but I'm already in my head, I'm worrying about 
go for baseball conflicts in 2022 um, with the RV show or something, for example. You know, so like I'm able to like when I see a project come up, such as the Hool property thing, in my head I can kind of jump to 2022 and try to go backwards with it. And I guess that would be a unique skill to have. And it's kind of an odd skill or <laughs> it's hard to quantify, but. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions of Mr. Klein? Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next candidate is Ms. Geneva Kubel. And did I pronounce that right? Perfect. Welcome. You got both the first and the last name right. You're very good. <laughs> Ms. Kubel, please introduce yourself and tell us the primary reason you are interested in serving on the Forest Lake City Council. Okay. My name is Geneva Kubel. I grew up in North Minneapolis, purchased a home in Forest Lake in uh, 2011 because once we came here, my husband and I knew this was the place we wanted to live. And we just retired and we moved here full time in 2018, purchased the house in 2011. But we love it here, and um, we can thank the, form, the city council and the people who have come before us for making this a wonderful place to live. Um, as a former letter carrier, I really got involved in people's daily lives and things like that and saw what was important to them as a community from a resident standpoint. And I hope to use that experience to help me with this experience. Um, I've worked on an HOA in um, Washington, D.C. area, which gave me a lot of, um, I guess, experience in managing large amounts of money, community, uh, things like that, and just trying to get people to come together for the common cause, which was the betterment of the community in general. There was 200 families that lived in that what, the development that I particularly managed, and it was a great learning experience for me. Um, why I'm interested in being on the city council? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Some are a little bit selfish. Um, it's because I would like to be a part of this governing body. Um, I, as a recent retiree, I will have plenty of time to do the reading and the research and those kinds of things that are needed to do this job and I think to do it well. I don't have any conflicting things that is going on in my life right now. And it will help give me a sense of purpose. Um, and so for that, those are my selfish reasons. But I do understand that we don't have this great city because of one person. It's because of this current council and the people here who have stepped up the plate in their current jobs that they've been doing in different areas of the city. And even Kaylin, a new person who is just wanting to get involved, like myself, in this city to make it better. So that's what I'm hoping to do, and that's why I'm interested. I want to be a part of something that I think is terrific. What is the top issue in 2019 for the city of Forest Lake? Well, as a newbie, this one was very hard for me to come up with. So I did some research. And um, land use is important. Economics is important. Competitive housing is important. Parks, trails, rep rep and those kinds of things. Transportation, water resources, community facilities, education, crime, taxes, environment, all of the above. So then I decided, OK, what does the city think is its important issue? So that's when I found the comprehensive plan. And I read the 2031, and then I read the 2041. And I'm not so sure if you guys have actually adopted the 2040 comprehensive plan yet or not. And if you haven't, that's probably <coughs> where I would say the most important issue is so that we know where we are and that the comprehensive plan has kind of identified that, but it also suggests where we're going. Um, the one thing I like about that is as a new person involved, if I really wanted to know where the city is headed, it's right there already laid out for some of us, so we don't have to get angry about it. There is a plan, and that's what I like. I, I as an individual resident, have to kind of like be a little bit more proactive with that instead of blaming the city for the current issues. Everything takes time, and I can clearly see that a lot of time was spent in that comprehensive plan, and it details out a lot of where we're going. 
might, there might not be the money yet, there might not be where the money is coming from, but you can clearly see that there's a plan and that it takes not only the city, but you work in conjunction with the state and many different departments. So I, I applaud that that effort for the comprehensive plan, and I did read it, and I and I like what I read. Describe your vision for the city of Forest Lake. Well, my vision is to ensure that this city's motto, as good as it sounds, continues to be one of our objectives. This city is known for its natural resources and its outdoor recreational activities, which is the very reason I chose to live here. Um, I, I see that we have a downtown area. I would like to see that continue to survive, but I would also like to see it thrive. And I'm not exactly sure we're at the thriving part yet. I think that, that we, what we have is, is good, but I think we can do better. Growth and development here and in the housing. Housing is important because we need to reach out to many different kinds of people and their different changing needs. Families, um, families that are downsizing, aging people, that we need to make uh, things available, resources and things available to them so that they feel like they can still be a part of the community no matter what age they are and no matter where they are in their lives. Um, education, that's a, a vision for me too. I don't have any children that are currently in any public schools or private schools, but I do understand one thing about education. If you educate our youth and, and you have continuing education for adults, you have people who are going to be more involved in the community because it's the communities through the education that makes us all better. And so with that and all these things in balance, my goal is really as simple as keeping Forest Lake as good as it sounds. Do you have any questions for the City Council? I do. I, I would like to know a little bit about the time commitment because I have no idea what that really is. And the other one, it's something I need to know because um, it could affect, like, as a retiree, I can only have like, it has to do with my income and, and benefits that I get. So I don't know if there's any kind of stipend or any kind of compensation that city councils get, but I would like to know if that's true, if there is any, what it is, so I can make an educated decision and this is something I would really want to do if it doesn't financially negatively impact my life. It's about nine cents an hour. Okay. <laughs> I, could think, I, think, I think you're being conservative on that. Yeah. Be generous. Uh, there is a small, there is a small stipend for council. Is is it four thousand dollars? It's fifty five hundred for the year. year. Okay. Paid quarterly. Um, time time commitment. Tech, so let's give you the technical answer. Um, we meet uh, second and fourth Mondays, um, seven p.m. We meet um, on the third Monday, typically for a workshop session. Those sessions are between two to three hours each, mm -hmm. and you can count on a packet of at least a hundred pages of material in advance for advanced prep. Um, and then we also divvy up as a council um, individual commission appointments and liaison positions. And so typically. Um, one to two meetings a month relate for each of those appointment appointed positions. Um, most of those are evenings. Um, and then it really is as you know that's that's kind of the minimum and then as a council member, it's you know your service to the community and whatever you are doing to out, you know outreach or um, gather input, um, research items, be a you know be an active li listening participant. Other duties as assigned, things like jumping in a lake and... <laughs> Which they did the last weekend and it was a lot of fun. Did you go? Yes, and there was no quorum there, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Let's change that for next year. <laughs> Point made. <laughs> we couldn't advertise, didn't have enough time to advertise for a quorum there, so... <laughs> did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Other questions at last? No. Does the city council have any further questions with the candidate? I would say what um, what stood out for you in that comp plan? That was As you kind of well. unpacked that, you were reading through it. What what pieces really resonated with you? 
that there a couple of things. Um, the housing plan in general, because it did talk about the needs of a, like a changing community and um, it talked about you know, the, the needs for as people grow older and, and, um, and providing services to make this a place that people want to come. Um, and then the other part of it that really stood out to me was the transportation plan. Um, both of these things, along with, you know, business development and things like that, oh, the one, the one thing that did stand out the most is that um, it was that Forest Lake doesn't really have enough businesses that would keep people working in Forest Lake. And that didn't surprise me, but I think that is probably the one place where we can really do better. Get some good paying jobs right here in this city and it might even help resolve some of the other funding issues that we might have. Thank you. That was very close to my question as well. Any other questions of Ms. Kubel? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and next we have Ms. Susan Young. Welcome. Hi. Ms. Young, please introduce yourself and tell us the primary reason you're interested in serving on the Forest Lake City Council. My name is Susan Young. I moved here in December of 91. Um, probably not the best year to, um, to move on to a rural piece of property um, that I didn't see really until spring. Um, and I was raised to serve. My, my family, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, um, gave me an example that if you live in a community, it is your home, it is your forever home, even your temporary home, you will offer your skills, your talents, your knowledge, your time to that community, um, however you can. Um, I've been an elected person. My first elected position was a Washington County Rural Water District number three in Northern Washington County in Oklahoma. Um, uh, so I've always lived rural, always. Um, uh, I have been a council member here um, in Forest Lake. Um, I was on the Township Planning Commission way back when. Um, I currently serve on a number of organizations in the community um, because I have, there are needs in the community and somebody needs to step up. Um, so as I look at those various organizations um, and my links to those organizations, being able to bring their needs, bring their input, bring their advice, and their energy to the city council um, is why I did apply for council this time. What is the top issue in 2019 facing the city of Forest Lake? Mayor, members of the council, you have got an incredible group of candidates tonight, and they have all recognized that there is no one single issue um, that is the thing that will fix whatever may ail Forest Lake in 2019. Um, but one of the things that I have talked about um, over and over again is my concern that Forest Lake be merely a bedroom community. Um, and, you know, bedrooms aren't bad. You know, they're, they're, they're good places to, to curl up on a, on a night like tonight's going to be. Um, but one of the recurring things that I see in every um, community activity that I am a part of is the difficulty in getting folks, once they have gone into their home, their cave, to come out again. Um, we do have a good comp plan. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the 2040 comp plan, but there were fewer than 100 folks in this community that were active in providing input, advice, um, and, and discussion items to that comp plan, no matter how hard 
Donovan worked to be out in the park, and, and council members worked, and we had open houses here. Um, I <clears throat> am still coaching um, community ed sports teams um, because parents don't have time to coach their kids. Um, the Forest Lake Fourth of July is driven by the Forest Lake American Legion. Um, they are hurting for funding. They are hurting for people to help plan the event um, because folks don't want to come out and join in those fundraisers um, because we're, we, we're, in our, we're in our little caves. Um, I'm part of the Wellness 50 Project, which is specifically geared toward getting elders to come out of their caves, um, be social, be active. Building community. Getting our folks out, not for a crisis. Um, I, I, I applaud Mayor Bain with being able to get an enormous number of people out um, when our police department was threatened. My concern is how do we get an enormous number of people out in the various activities of our community that build our community and make us the envy of every other city and every other township in the state of Minnesota. I think that building community, bringing us together, city folks, rural folks, horse folks, dog folks, lake folks, not lake folks, building our community and bringing us together. Um, quite frankly, that is going to be our biggest challenge because then we can have and build consensus and build excitement around a revitalized downtown or parks and trails or youth activities or elder activities. All right. Describe your vision for Forest Lake. It's the place that everybody else wants to be. Every other business, every other family, every other single retired elder like me. Um, it's the place that they want to come for a daycation. Um, they want to ride their bike up from St. Paul on the trails and, and sleep in a bed and breakfast here and eat at a restaurant and they maybe camp at, Marine on, at Big Marine Lake or down at um, uh, the state park. And it just <laughs> left my brain. Um, <coughs> They, they want to come here on the 61 junk jaunt and come to um, our, 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 our small stores and Green Door and, and eat at Ernie's. And they, they want to be here because there's something here that's fun, that's different, that's interesting, and it is a convenient place to be, and it's an exciting place to be. They want to live here. They found maybe 20 acres like I've got, and, and, and they can have their horses and a couple of goats, and their kids can be part of 4-H, and their kids can have a world-class education in a high school that has urban <coughs> types of opportunity, educational opportunities. Businesses want to be where there's excitement and interest, whether it's a manufacturing business or a small business. Quite frankly, small businesses, small entrepreneurs, those are the real driving force of an economy and of jobs. And so those places, they want to be where the excitement is and where there are folks that are going to take advantage of their services. So my vision of Forest Lake is the place where schools, community organizations, Folks, sports teams, businesses, all want to be. Do you have any questions for the city council? <coughs> no, I don't. You have um, an enviable job tonight. You have some amazing candidates. I've, I've, I've listened to them, and I've, I'm, I'm proud as heck that I live in a community that has this many folks that are interested and qualified to be on the council. Does the city council have questions for the candidate? I, so I do have a question. I believe I know some of the answers, but not everyone who's listening to you tonight, to you tonight knows these answers. You have a um, professional background that lends itself to some skills that might be valuable on council. Can you just <laughs> top part of your resume, Cliff Notes version? I just think it's helpful to have that out there. I know some of the Cliff Notes version, yep. but let's get it on the public record. 
I have hung around cities and counties and states and watched um, good and bad city councils as a city staff person um, for 30 years. Um, um, down in Oklahoma, I was um, exposed to some of the very best city manglers, um, uh, and uh, as, as we call them down there, and, and some of the best and worst city councils. Um, I was a staff person for the city of Minneapolis, um, director of solid waste and recycling, which was a senior staff position in public works, and so was part of the public works leadership team and part of the city of Minneapolis leadership team. Um, helped develop the 311 call center. Uh, they used our database and our call center model um, that, was, that I developed in solid waste and recycling. Um, worked with other public works entities for safety programs. I am very, very proud of the fact that while I was with the city, we were the only major solid waste entity in, um, quite frankly, the state of Minnesota. They had no fatalities and no career-ending injuries. I was part of the city's leadership team for the um, our Republican National Convention and other things, so that meant that I had FEMA um, and um, national training for FEMA disaster responses and um, um, weapons of mass destruction. I'll never look at the trunk of a car again the same way. Um, and then I was also um, in charge of cleaning up after the tornado uh, that went through North Minneapolis. Um, my daughter happened to be in that tornado in a house that, that had that got crushed. Um, but then I was involved in the cleanup. Um, I was also involved in the development of the statistical package where each of the city's goals had measurable outcomes and all of the senior leadership from the various um, city departments, inspections, police, fire, um, public works, had to present on a monthly basis our progress toward those goals um, and developing measurable um, measurable goals and then developing a system to to measure them without having a whole mess of new staff and a whole bunch of new red tape. Um, I hang around cities. I like them. I also teach a class at um, Hamlin University for Carol Becker, an adjunct professor there, and it's called the Apple Pie Theory of Public Decision Making. Any other questions for Ms. Young? All right. Thank you so much. With that, it is um, almost 7.30. We are going to uh, take a five-minute recess. Um, before we go into recess and before I madly start accumulating notes, um, just a quick follow-up on what we will do after recess. Um, we will open up um, discussion and I will um, we'll open discussion with a motion and a second for a candidate um, and then have, have discussion, have a vote. All votes taken tonight are going to be done on a roll call basis and all of the, those roll call votes, if we do end up in a multiple vote scenario, we'll be doing those on a rotating basis. Um, any other questions from council before we go into a five minute recess? All right, with that, let's uh, recess here until, we'll just pull it till 7.35.
<laughs> I'll call this meeting back to order. Council, we have a slate of candidates before us. I will entertain a motion to open discussion. Madam Mayor, I, uh, you know, for me it kind of boiled down to a, a couple different people, and uh, but um, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that applied for this job. It's uh, it can be gratifying and it can be also be thankless at the same time, and uh, it just takes lots and lots of hours, and we all know that there are uh, at least three, four, sometimes five meetings a month or more, and so uh, uh, thank you for for coming forward and, and applying for this thing. Unfortunately, we have to choose one, and hopefully we can get that job done tonight. And so uh, uh, the reason I spoke up right, right away, it, like I said before, it kind of boiled down a uh, couple people, but I can only nominate one at a time here for sure. So um, I've always always been impressed with uh, Connie Grabovi's uh, level-headed approach to issues in the city of Forest Lake, and I've talked to her many, many times about that. And so, therefore, I'd make a motion that uh, we nominate Connie Grabovi for this position. Motion made for applicant Grabovi. Is there a second? I'll ask again. Is there a second? Motion fails. I will entertain a second motion. Well, if there's no one else, I'll make a second. I told you that I had boiled it down to two. Is that okay? <laughs> My second choice would be uh, Paul Gerard because I've known Paul for a long, long time. We served back on the Planning Commission 24 years ago, and he's still there. <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with him. I don't know for sure. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so therefore, uh, and I know that uh, he also has this level-headed ap approach to issues, and, and uh, he's always been uh, one of the reasons why um, uh, there was always good conversation at the Planning Commission meetings, and, and uh, so a very important part of that unit for the City of Forest Lake. So I'll make a motion that we appoint Paul Gerard. Motion made for applicant Gerard. Is there a second? I'll second. There is a motion and a second. I will open up for discussion. Any discussion? I will, um, so chime in, I want to um, echo Council Member Husnick's comments around, we really have a luxury of having eight very highly qualified candidates before us tonight and a lot of great discussions and if we could accomplish a quarter of what was the ideas that were put before us. Um, it, for 2019, we will be on a great path. Um, I uh, also appreciate um, Paul Gerard's leadership on the Planning Commission and his depth of experience. Um, I've always said he bring he runs the best meeting in the city. Um, I watch his meetings to prepare for these, and clearly, maybe I need to watch a few more. Um, so he does a great job and is level-headed. I he has. Um, encountered a share of conflicts and I've always appreciated his approach in guiding those conversations and he has um, had more than a packed room and um, very important issues and I've always appreciated his leadership and his service in that role. So I will support that nomination tonight and just wanted to make that statement. Any other comments tonight or discussion items? I would just um, echo um, what Councilmember Husnick and Mayor Bain said. Um, this is a really difficult decision, um, incredibly qualified candidates. I've been in, in your shoes on that side and I know what it feels like. Um, and now I know what it feels like up here and this is really, really challenging. But I seconded um, the motion because I too, since I have become involved in the city, been really impressed with Paul Gerard and how he runs meetings. and. Sometimes those planning commission meetings can go long, there can be lots of controversy, and I've just seen him handle it with a level head and been really impressed with, with that work. And I think um, 
he brings something to this council, and that's kind of what it came down to for me is um, that time on the planning commission and working through the comprehensive plan that we'll be using to guide us forward. Very good. Other discussion items? I, I don't really have anything to add. I just, I want to echo the comments around, um, I, I firmly believe this may be one of the most difficult decisions yeah. as a council member I'm ever going to make because I, I, we had a slate of candidates standing before us that brought a tremendous amount of strengths and passions and experience and skills. Um, and in many cases, you could almost just flip a coin, really. Um, I guess my, my perspective is, uh, what I like to look for is somebody that has the ability to sort of balance the strengths and skills of the current council and our skill sets here, um, and, and maybe balance some of our personal weaknesses as well with those strengths that they, they bring uh, to the table. Um, I guess the other thing that I would add here um, is that I would really ask all of you to stay involved in some way, shape, or form. We have a tremendous um, number of opportunities for you to be involved on commissions and other committees, and those skills and strengths uh, that you've brought here tonight are exactly what this community needs. And especially those of you that are maybe a little new to this process, new to this place, new to this chamber, um, I look to you um, to please, please stay involved with the city in some way, shape, or form. Reach out to Mayor Bain. Lots of opportunities or potential opportunities here, and we would just ask you to please stay involved in some way, shape, or form. Any further discussion? With that, I will uh, call a vote. And Dan, can we get a roll call vote on this, please? Uh, Councilmember Husnick? Aye. Uh, Councilmember Bystrom? Aye. Councilmember Monson? Aye. And Mayor Bain? Aye. With that, motion approved. Congratulations. We, the option, we, do have, we do have an option um, on the agenda tonight to take the oath either this evening or we can take the oath and make it official at our next council meeting, which is next Monday at 7 p.m. Your choice? Uh, next Monday, please. My wife wants to be here. Your wife wants to be here for some photos. Oh. Happy to do that. <laughs> does she, Paul, Paul, does she know about this? <laughs> <laughs> does she know where you are tonight? Yes, she does. All right. With that, we have uh, got, completed our agenda for the evening. Staff, anything on the other section? Anything to note? No. Very good. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And we're adjourned. <laughs>